So I want to know, what are your hidden gems of miniature painting equipment? I reckon out of any tool in the, the miniature painting thing, yeah. the handles thing is the thing I've tried the most variations of. Plastic shot glasses. I'm not talking about the little ones. I'm talking about the oversized bigger ones. I mean, this is like the, the least straight edge thing I think I'll ever say. Having a party? Is, no, right? no, just paint some model. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> this is something that I've kind of infamously become known for. Uh, <laughs> dropper bottles. Yep. They're my go-to for paint. What can I say? There must be someone on the team. There must be one of you <laughs> <laughs> that uses the magnifying glass. Before we get started with today's episode, we wanted to let you know that we now have new ranges of fantastic products over on the Siege Studio shop. Whether you're wanting to purchase a PDF tutorial for a character you're painting, you need a new airbrush, painting accessories, or want to book a class, you'll find what you need. We also have a bunch of merchandise, which is a great way to support the podcast. To see what we stock, head over to siegestudios.co.uk forward slash shop. Right then, boys, we're back again. Welcome to this week's episode. It's a good one. We are going to be talking about our hidden gems of painting equipment. So we've all been painting for a while. Yeah. Everyone's probably got their one little weird thing that they like to use, maybe a product that's uh, not, not designed for the purpose you use it for, or a neat little hack that you've got. So I want to know, what are your hidden gems of miniature painting equipment? I'll step up first if it's okay. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I absolutely love oversized shot glasses for holding miniatures. Purely because they shot glasses like disposable ones or like yeah. What do you <laughs> think? That well, you don't glass. buy you don't buy a nice set of glass ones for no, like your yeah. really nice models. No, no, why would you? What? What? I don't. I don't. I don't sort of elitism my shot glasses for like our models. <laughs> like, like, oh, I've got I'm... my fancy brushes. I got my fancy like metal. Uh... Yeah, I'm painting Dante, so he gets the, uh, the he glass gets the special glass one. Yeah, yeah. No. Imagine if you had like the novelty one as well. Like you know, it's like cactus ones with like the arm tag on <laughs> yeah. it. You could use them for like little sub assemblies. <laughs> yeah. Well, Never, no, no, I would not. No, I would no, not be no sub assemblies. Do not mention that word around Joe. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, no, so plastic shot glasses. I'm not talking about the little ones. I'm talking about the oversized bigger ones. I mean, this is like the, the least straight edge thing I think I'll ever say. But that like, is funny that, yeah. especially after what we were talking about in the, the Siege story episode and everything like that, and uh, your your big thing is shot glasses. <laughs> for painting miniatures. I don't drink good. out of them. Yeah. I mean, like, I mean, you can put water in them and shot water. Just imagine really you there like in, in, the, like, uh, in the TK Maxx checkout with your shot glasses and your blitz. Don't you be rough. knocking TK Maxx, mate. All right, okay. We're already established. Having a party. Is, no, right? no, just painting some model. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no so um there's loads of various different painting handles that are out there de definitely and I, I, this is not trying to try and bash on any other ones at all whatsoever i i just personally have always really rated the the larger size shot glasses and i think the reason for that is just because number one um the conical shape of them it just works ergonomically with the hand really well uh and because they're so light and it's not it, like don't get me wrong if you're holding loads of really heavy bits of wood or if you've got like a big bit of dowel or whatever it can get heavy if you're holding it for several hours or whatever the shot glass literally weighs hardly anything at all whatsoever. And the larger ones are perfectly sized to fit a 32 mil base on as well. So like most models that I'd say the models that we paint the most being Marines and, and like other uh, MEQs, um, you know, that they, they basically fit on those shot glasses with a bit of blue tack perfectly fine. Um, and, and as well, the other thing that I use it for is I've made like various different jigs or tools with it. So like, for example, painting bare heads, I've drilled loads of holes in the top of the, f of the of the, in the bottom as in the flat of the, of the bottom of the shot glass, put two mil bits of paper clip through, super glued them. I might have bonded them in. And that's made me like a head rotisserie for when I'm, for when I'm, <laughs> head, for, rotisserie. Yeah, head rotisserie. I don't know what else to call it. I was, uh, as you was explaining it, I was thinking, I wonder what he's going to call this. I wonder how he's going to describe <laughs> it. And I would never in a million years have come up with head rotisserie. Well, he's got to have a good name but, for this. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect Surely. name. Perfect name. Perfect name. Yeah. So it's so essentially, you, you've got like 10, 10, two mil bits of, of paper clip in it that's super glued in. And you just literally drill with a two mil drill bit in the bottom of the head, stick the heads on when they're grey plastic. Obviously, you've cleaned all mold lines and bits off of them undercoat them do all your airbrush skin on them like the various stages of airbrush skin and whatever and then uh, and then just paint all the, do all the all the proper painting with the brush do that on the rotisserie and then once they once they've varnished you take them off and stick them on your model so you never actually touch the heads I told you in the process once they're on there and they're undercoated it's my favorite the shot glasses are phenomenal and and if you do drink you can enjoy them but um but but let's say on the head thing with your head rotisserie <laughs> but I mean cuz I, I do that with a bit of cork personally but <laughs> On the shot glass thing, you actually got me into that because I, if you've got like a big army or you paint like, or say you're batch painting like 30 Marines or something. Yeah, yeah. I don't know about everyone else, but I'm not buying like five, 10 pound painting handles in by the dozen. Yeah. So I didn't have like, I've only had like a couple and I would always like swap them over. But then I'm like, 
this is genius. Why don't I think of this? Because you could buy like a pack of like 30 shot glasses or whatever for a couple of quid. Pack of 12 from Poundland, mate. Not sponsored by Poundland. But pack of 12, yeah. Literally. Sort, just, sort your just, army right just, out. Just literally. You can get those. And look, if you if you don't... And the other good thing I would say as well, and this is something else that is very good with them, um, obviously you can get them at different colours as well. So if you if you want to get different colour ones or so... If you want to have like a little it, rave when you do it. A rave when you do it, you can. I'm way, yeah. How's but, that a benefit but, to but like... I'm, 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 I'm going to swing it on to benefit. Okay, okay. Okay. But I would advocate that you get the clear ones because they are phenomenal for mixing painting and seeing how the paint behaves when you tilt the glass back. Like if you're mixing in a shot glass, I don't advocate always mixing in the hopper or the cup on the airbrush. But uh, if, you're, if you're just getting into sort of diluting and mixing paint, the shot glasses are great. So you can do it in there and see how it, it when you do a draw as in turn the cup and then put it back vertical, you can see how the paint falls down on the side of the shot glass. And how it behaves on that plastic is essentially how it's going to behave when it touches the model if you're airbrushing it on. So getting it to the right opacity in that shot glass as you do the tilt, it just visually gives you that cue so you can see that the paint is ready to be used in the airbrush. They're, they're multifunctional. Like they're great for painting handles. Um, I'd always advocate using them personally. And um, and, and yeah, like, you know, costume wise, if you, if you don't want to spend five quid, 10 quid, whatever it is, or 20 quid on some of the really expensive like wooden ones or whatever, um, then, then yeah, I mean, they're, they're, I, yeah they're I, I, I use them for like characters and stuff. Yeah, so I yeah. have a nice one, but yeah. this brilliant for, for batch painting. Look, if you want to snob up your characters, that's nothing wrong with that. Like, you, you want to put them on a, on a metal uh, or a glass <laughs> container. <laughs> well, I think I, I've like, first of all, I feel bad for now laughing at the coloured shot glasses thing because that was a really good point. <laughs> so I'll give you that. <laughs> that's a very good point. So fair enough. That's fine. Sorry for laughing. That's fine. But <laughs> the, um, you can rave all you I, like. I, right? I, <laughs> that's fine. Yeah. I've, um, I uh, I've I reckon out of any tool in the the miniature painting thing, yeah. the handles thing is the thing I've tried the most variations of. Really? So like, yeah. okay. I've tried. I've had official ones like prop like plastic ones you can buy. I've had the wooden ones you can buy. I've had three D printed ones. There's some nutty ones as well, like the arm that like comes. Oh, off. yeah, that's so you could. Yeah, that's yeah. So, you could, so yeah, yeah, that's what that's what got me into it. High tech. I was yeah. like, oh, that looks. They really are good. Handy, actually. They are good, but bit of sprue. Might have bonded on the side of the shot glass. You've not lived, <laughs> like, honestly. Like, Let's gloss over the might have bond. Yeah, you know, I'm not getting that. into the might have bond conversation again. Um, the w- one of the things that I found, I've done the uh, Jenga pieces yep. that Darren Latham kind of suggested to everyone, and yep. I, I that was one I almost pretty much always stuck with. To be I honest, that. I really I like that. That. No, Jenga I pieces. That. Yeah, so there was like I'm sure it was Darren Latham. I don't know if I'm mis misremembering, but um, he put a video out or something where he was like. Basically, with Jenga pieces, because the size that they are and the way the way that they're designed to all fit together, you can kind of they're like modular, so you can kind of like make a bigger one if you're doing a tank or a regular character might you like rubber band them together, sort of. Thing. You can or glue them or whatever. Like you can make a bigger one. Like uh, so, I've done a few. I've never. Yeah. I, do you know what? I've, so I've never done, ever like, seen that or heard of that. But that's regular cool. like characters on a on just a. a you, that, that's on your your singular Jenga piece, your normal models. <laughs> this is ch- absolutely and then, mental. This is genius. And then maybe you're doing a bike. Oh, it's an oval base. Oh, I'll put two Jenga pieces I didn't together. Even think of the ovals. That's yeah, so yeah. Good. So I'll do yeah, I'll do yeah. a, um uh, I'll I'll put two Jenga pieces together and it kind of and it gives you a good grip. But the the that's the one I stuck with the most. The shot glasses thing. The only thing I've ever had the problem with shot glasses. Yeah. I don't know if this is just me being too like heavy handed or anything. You crank them. I crack them oh, I've, I've yeah. all yeah. the yeah. time. Like, well, that is my only thing. I don't know if I'm buying the wrong ones. I don't know if they're, they're too it's, it, brittle. But I think it is just one of the few. I'm also backs. obviously pretty heavy handed. So it's like I'm cracking them a lot. Whereas the Jenga pieces, that's solid wood, mate. I'm not cracking through that. <laughs> yeah. so that it does It does depend on which ones you buy. Uh, there, there's different, diff, diff, obviously different qualities of shot glass. I know it sounds really silly, but there are. The thing is, at the um, end of the day, they're kind of like a disposable thing you buy for a party. Yeah, exactly. Some of, them are, be like, some of them are very yeah. thin. Like they, that's in the wall is very thin, but you can get. I, th- I, I would argue that at a certain point, you're kind of defeating the, the virtue of them being like cheap and disposable if you're going to start buying high quality heavy duty ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, well, I don't, I don't know. I mean, the, the ones in, the ones in Poundland are pretty good. Like they, they are quite thicker as in like more sturdy. They obviously work really well for you. Maybe it's just a personal thing. But yeah, um, the, the Jenga pieces is kind of what I stuck on because also never even heard of that. you can get mini like travel jenga oh god if you ever need like little blocks for anything like little sanding blocks or something like that <laughs> this this hurts my brain that actually, actually came from i'll be honest that came from i accidentally ordered travel jenga when i was <laughs> trying to <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh, I've, I've seen this great video. It's genius. Yeah. I'm going to buy some Jenga. I bought some Jenga. And then it shows up and it's like Jenga this big for like <laughs> doing it on a plane. That's literally what happened. I guess you could use them for like a for like a head or like a 
Oh, you hate sub assemblies, actually. So I'm guessing that you've never had any use for this whatsoever. Well, the sanding block is the main use I got out of them. Okay. Um, How big is like the travel size compared to the the big block? Because in my head, like even the full block size block is, isn't big enough. Your, your block is sort of that. This is great for the audio only listeners. <laughs> Joe, your, your Joe's holding is up of, his fingers. <laughs> your block is sort of there, and your your mini block is like down there. So yeah. it's like it is small. But yeah, that was an accidental thing. But I turned it into a positive. So yeah, um, that I, I didn't want to pick that as my thing. But glad to bring it up during your one because it's not really my thing. I stole it off of off of Darren Lay. Okay, so, right. um, well, who I'm sure puts it to way better use than me. <laughs> if I'm honest, I never heard of that one. So yeah, um, uh, that is yeah, that yeah. is very cl- the mo- the modularity is where you got me because ovals are something that kind of no one has a really good Solution answer to. Mm. But Jenga, yeah, Jenga, mate. Okay, well I'll uh, I'll throw mine into the mix then. This is a uh, this is something that I've kind of infamously become known for. Uh, <laughs> Dropper bottles. Yep. They're my go-to for paint. What can I say? I like some paint manufacturers that do not provide dropper bottles with their paints. And sometimes they provide dropper bottles that aren't very good. So, me, myself, from China, I get by the hundred. I think I, I think I buy me a box of hundred. Your highest quality dropper bottle. You say that. They are absolutely exactly the same as what everyone else is using, yeah. as far as I'm aware. So, I'll, I'll bulk buy a massive pack of just empty, clear dropper bottles. And I decan all of my paint into them. I'll cut off the label. I'm chucking that on them as well. At the end of the day, by the end, they actually look like pretty professional. I, yeah, I like to pride yeah. myself on the job that I do. People talk about like having to thin the paints down to like get them out of the pot. Nonsense. Stop doing your funnels. It, it's literally drop a bottle open, pot, pour it, call it a day. I'm not that bothered personally about the like 0.7 milliliters of paint that's left in the pot. Get it out, get as much out as you can with a brush. You, it's fine honestly it's fine and the reason that i like this is because as a wet palette user i like that i cannot have to have like a junky brush around for decanting paint yeah, yeah. much much quicker i just pick it off the pick it off the rack put it straight onto the palette done and also i'm not a airbrush paint user i just use my normal acrylics and i thin them down yeah yeah hopper of the hopper of the airbrush straight in with the dropper bottle no decanting paint no mixing it in a shot glass james <laughs> sorts right out dropper bottles they're I, my thing i think I mean, that sounds like a very impassioned speech, but I think you, you, <laughs> that um, I wonder if there is a, a direct correlation between people that love dropper bottles and people that use wet palettes, because that is the reason why well, I. It's the airbrush thing up. as well, because like, I, you'd actually probably talk me more into it if I like just for the palette, but I actually find the biggest use for it is is the airbrush. That's yeah, that's the biggest the, thing. Because I I sort of was always like oh, i can't be bothered if whatever pot it comes in that's just what i'm going to use but yeah mm. the more you start using a wet palette the more i was like oh, it would be handy if all of these was, was all in yeah. the drop bottle and i did the switch with the with the uh the current gw paints and um i did did the same sort of thing as you where i was i was just i just poured it in because my thought process was like if i keep it in this pot i'm gonna lose x amount of paint from the way that i'm having to dump it onto the uh, wet palette and it might dry out in the and it might dry, dry out, out and stuff like yeah, that yeah. so i'm going to lose that amount of paint anyway so just because i'm pouring it well, you in you can also be much less wasteful right because you can be way more precise with the amount that you squeeze out of a drop of bottle if you only need yeah. a tiny bit of paint i can literally like sometimes i won't even squeeze it i'll just like just touch the lid to my palette say i've just got like dot a gem with like a bit of white i haven't got to get like a whole gob of mm. white and put it on my palette i can literally like just just dot the tip yeah. on the palette. There are huge advantages to them. I do agree with you. I think that they do clog just as they do clog in the nozzle as well. If you ha- if paint comes out, you did. Got, you, got you covered, James. Cocktail sticks on a little oh, uh, on standby. Uh, no, no, paper I mean, clip for I mean me. inside, paper clip inside the cap. Okay, so sometimes inside the cap on them, they'll get excess paint will will come out of the of the pot and it will go inside the cap. Solution for you that, get a, you get like a big surround. Donut Way ahead of you, James. Around Solution for that. that. Just clean your paint lids when you see them clogging them up. <laughs> Don't be lazy. You see those loads of paint and cubes laying in there? You've got your blitz on standby. I know what you're like. Blitz. <laughs> it does It does happen. You know, uh, there are advantages to them, definitely. Um, I will say, yeah. washes, big no. I do not thin my washes down personally. I, I like them straight out of the pot. Yeah. There are a few paints that, like, for obvious reasons, I will not put in a drop. I'm not being like texture paste in a drop. Bottle. <laughs> like, fair enough. But wa- washes, I'll leave in the standard ones. But like 99% of the time, like base paint, layer paint, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And it's not like manufacturer specific either. Because I found that a lot of companies that even do do the dropper bottles, sometimes there's like design flaws on the lid. I'm yeah. not going to name names. But... Yeah, no, no, I get that. I mean, I I've, I, I use both. I've got, uh, well, anyone who knows me well enough knows I've got loads of uh, uh, old, super old GW paint. I, I, I love the old old pots, the new ones. Uh, every pot has, has its issues. I think that there's no, there is no golden 
golden product like silver bullet to store in paint in a in a in a in a in a pot i think there's all different everyone has its own inherent things which are either more time consuming a bit frustrating or they aren't as functionality as easy to use um yeah uh it's a real difficult one i, I don't I, it's the same as like paints and stuff like that i don't really see one as better than the other i just think it's more of a preference thing it's more like well like you prefer dropper bottles i prefer super old old older paint bottles like hex pots i love the old hex pots from games workshop i think they're they're are they the ones? Did they have the like the bit in the lid as well? Yeah, they yeah, do. Yeah, they got the smaller. they got the weight. They got it was way smaller. Yeah, but the, you gave me you gave me some old paint when we done the Leviathan box, and that's like I I, I mean that's way before my time. Uh, so I, I didn't realize that there was like kind of the same. I mean, thing. that's that's even before my time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yes, I'm old. Um, and so so, but no, the, the, I love the old hex pots. I think that that design for me personally is is my favorite pot design just because they they don't dry out at all. I've I wonder got, like, why. A, no company seems to revisit that. I don't so know. I hear so much positive stuff about those old hex pots, but the yeah, no one, no new company seems to revisit. There must be a reason. But I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm not really sure. not sure as to why. I, I do really like them. Um, I, I've always thought they're great. Uh, I've never had any problems with them. So yeah, but but again, like, actually, but are you referring to the ones with the black lid, or are you referring all to the white, old black, all the white? Black, all the white. No, as in they, they were hex pots with black lids, and there were hex pots with white lids, and they were different ranges basically. So you had like a lot of the metallics in the old old. So range. we're not talking about the the really not old the bolter, ones, not the, the bolter ones with the depressions in the lid or the flip lid. I'm talking about the, oh, okay. the, the actual hex pots. Yeah, with a plastic top, that, and they had uh, they had a tear away seal when you first bought yeah. them. Yeah. And then they've got uh, they've got uh, all the metallic ones would have a black lid, and the washes and inks would have a black lid, and then all the normal acrylic paints. G- would GW have do that now, still. Don't I think some of the metallics have like white lids and stuff. Yeah, yeah. they do so, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah currently, I yeah. actually like as much as I do have the dropper bottles, and I know a lot of people don't like the GW pots, but I actually really do see the perks of having that thing in the lid. I do. Like so, said, yeah, with the washes, yeah, yeah, that's are. perfect for me because yeah. like I open the lid, open it, leave it on your desk, and then you just get it straight out of the lid. I'm get the exact amount you want. Perfect. Say something a little bit controversial that I do think pot maintenance is just as important as actually anything else. There's like, the man who just said that he doesn't clean out the lids of his dropper bottles. Yeah. No, I'm just saying that sometimes when you take the lid off a dropper bottle, you've got a lovely donut around the top of the but uh, the top of the, uh, the, uh, the tip of the, of the pot. But but I do clean clean them. But I think that with if with the the stereotypical ones which people think that that like the lid catches a load of paint, you do need to clean it as well. Like it, it that lip that's in the lid, paint will fall under it, go down on the on the underside, and that's when you close the pot. And then that, that forces it to go around the edge of the top. It gets behind like the hinge. It gets bit. behind the hinge, yeah. yeah. And I think that it, it, all you got to do is just be careful to spot that, and you you they they don't really they have that many problems, being frank. So, so yeah. yeah. Just a quick one. We wanted to remind you that you can get your own miniatures painted by the world-class team here at Siege Studios. We offer a variety of painting levels and services to meet your needs and budget. Whether you want a centerpiece character or an entire gaming army, we offer well above the industry standard in both quality and experience. You can learn more about our services and get a quote now at siegestudios.co.uk. And in the month of August, new clients can get 5% off any commission by using the code AUGUST5. Back to the show. Joe, what you got for us? So I am going to stick up for something i think people sometimes are a bit like nervy about mentioning that they use and i don't use it all the time but i do think it's something that we should be more comfortable with letting people use if they if they want to and that is the kind of like jewelers magnifying glasses thing the toy story special yeah I yeah did, yeah i didn't yeah i didn't really so, it's only until the other day when you mentioned it, i didn't realize that you used them now and again I, I i just use them every now and then like i you know my eyes are fine but um sometimes i do just maybe find it harder to focus on certain things and if so, i'm trying to do a really tiny detail i know the argument is like well if you can't see it properly anyway then are you really going to be able to? Is I it... find that because I'll like take a photo of something and like hyper zoom in and be like, I didn't know that was there. God, I'm a terrible painter. I look <laughs> yeah. at my hand, like, I can't even see it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. then it becomes a thing. It's like, what? Well, Why do you think purpose? I don't use them? Like, like, what's the purpose of the model? Are you going to be taking pictures of it? Because you can see it in the pictures, yeah. and you yeah. might need your your magnifiers to to get in there and uh, and get it. While you know, if you can't see it. Um, so yeah, I just but I feel like there's like this bit of shame about using them. Oh, there's people, definitely shame around it. Joe. People like don't. <laughs> well, I have no shame. <laughs> people don't like talk about. Here's it. my thing, right? I'm a glasses wearer. Not wearing them at the minute, but I, I yeah. do wear my glasses. I can't wear them when I paint because, like, and I'd imagine that that's why I've never bothered to buy one of the magnifying things because if I'm wearing my glasses, I do this the way I paint anyway. I sort of like kind of look down my nose a bit. 
Mm. And I find that like my I'm sort of looking through like the rim of the glasses and it's yeah, like, yeah. kind of distorted right at the edge. So I've always been afraid that if I wore like the magnifier thing, I'd have like the same issue. Yeah, yeah. I, look, I get all the arguments against it. The, you know, training your eyes to use that thing. That's why I think it's good every now and then. That's not, why I don't not how, how much like magnification is it like two times, four times? Oh, I don't know. Because give... I've seen some of them. It's like, it's like you've got massive <laughs> your eyes on. are huge. <laughs> no, yeah. no, no, no. It's the standard one that everyone has, like the, the white thing. Yeah. And then you, you get like five different options on it so right. I, I just use whatever the, the least i've got to imagine that like you've been painting for like 25 minutes you got to stand up to make a drink and you just I literally, fall over <laughs> I, literally, I mean that could happen anyway some of the fumes and everything coming yeah. off of like the varnishes and whatever but the uh the yeah like i i haven't even tried whatever the most magnification is on it i'll i'll do some research you're creeping up I'll, with your age you're yeah, yeah. yeah I'll, I'll slowly get there yeah, yeah. I'm on, but like i said i don't use it all the time it's just if there's like a little hard to it and i think you know what people want to use it Let's let's stop let's stop kind of looking down on it. Making us Joe's making a stand against uh, eye magnification. I've got James. no no problem. With <laughs> well, the thing is that you you you've got glasses, so does that make it bigger for you, or does, does it go the other way? What? No, the reason I have glasses is just because I get head. I have sort of a double vision thing. It's just corrective for that. But it's, does it does it blow it up anything? No, no very not marginal. It's like point five. It's like the weakest prescription you can. I have. D I don't have glasses, and clearly don't. I fully understand how they work but yeah yeah so like, i i can understand the difficulty if you've already got glasses on and then you want to like put something else over the top of it but yeah for me speaking of someone with perfect eyesight um, <laughs> perfect eyesight but he does apparently need magnification for painting models so well that's my point i'm not sure the word perfect that's my point if i need it then it's needed right yeah. I, I don't no, i don't actually have perfect eyesight but i don't wear glasses but uh yeah so I, yeah, I think maybe just they, they, look, they're helpful. They're a tool that is helpful for a certain job. I don't know about you, James. I'm saving them for when I'm desperate. I need if I, I feel like if I get there now, I'm doomed. In I'm short sighted, years, yeah. and my biggest thing is that I I understand why people use them, and I understand it completely. I my thing is that I don't want to get my eyes accustomed to using them. And then I rely on them for everything. That's the thing. It's it's very. I, I'm, I am short sighted. So that's the glasses it, thing in general. Though, it is. Yeah, yeah. It is definitely the thing. Like I don't. I just like you. You wear them and your eyes get used to them. And, and not that they do get worse, but your eyes become accustomed to them. And then when you take them off, you 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 can't see as well as with with them on. And that's the thing. That I think that I would not wear them. I've got no. I've got I'm not bothered with anyone who uses them. I'm not going to downplay someone just because they use those glasses or well, whatever. I just think it's funny people. that we're obviously surrounded by so many painters. We have X amount of people on the team. I've never seen one person talk about them once. Like it must anyone be like the that does thing, right? There must be someone on the team. There must be one of you <laughs> <laughs> that uses the magnifying things. Um, You'll like, get a DM from one of them. Thanks so much for sticking up with those glasses. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like um, it's like we said on a previous episode about everyone came out the woodwork when Warhammer became cool. It's like Joe's yeah, spoken yeah, up for yeah. these now. All of a sudden, everyone's gonna be wearing bloody. <laughs> I don't know, but yeah. Well, they they. I just think yeah, it's one of those things, isn't it? Like, and also just to clarify, like I don't paint that much anyway, so I'm painting a few hours a week when I fancy it. And then within that painting time, I might use, might, n maybe not at all, but might use them for what, like certain things. I'm not saying just stick them on every time you paint. And if you're painting for 10 hours, wear your magnifiers all day. But yeah, yeah I think let's, let's, you know, let's let people magnify if they want. <laughs> let people... Hashtag let people magnify. <laughs> let the people magnify. Magnify revolution. Yeah. Right. I've, fact... I've got a fun game plan for us for this episode. I've been excited okay, to do this. Okay, come on in. Right. Test us. What is it? For the listeners, I'll explain how this works. You might have heard of this one before. This is going to be overrated, underrated. So I'm, we're rapid fire. I'm going to list off some, uh, some painting equipment and I want you to tell me if you think it's overrated, underrated, or appropriately rated. And then, very, very short explanation. Right, you ready for this? Overrated, underrated. Warpstone, glow. Uh, underrated. I'll go underrated as well. Underrated. Why do you think it's underrated? Because it's not a rubbish paint. It's just great for glazing and great for really thin layers. If you want to block in with it, it's not the paint to use. But it's not a crap paint. Yep. I think I echo those sentiments. And also it's used uh, sporadically through the Dark Angels color scheme. So that is... <laughs> Joe's very biased <laughs> as a result of that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, mold line removers. And uh, Overrated. Overrated. I think yeah. correctly rated, but I'll get into that. I overrated. Uh, blunt knife that you've used for a long time uh, is just as good, if not better, in my opinion. Or, or, or hot take: Tamiya, Tamiya foam, uh, sanding foam is amazing. I'd rather use those. 
Uh, I just think correctly rated because I I've never heard anyone big them up. <laughs> <laughs> so I imagine everyone probably feels just as indifferent about them as I do. Yeah, fair enough. Wet palettes. Uh, so difficult. Oh, it's got oh, oh, difficult one, mate. Uh, uh, just the use of a wet palette in general. Uh, oh, um, underrated. I think a lot of people were worried about them. They're really, really a great tool for different jobs. Yeah, I'd maybe go underrated. Yeah. I think you can't 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 rate them enough. Do you think that within people? within people who already paint or maybe are accustomed to them, do you think that they're overrated once you get past that beginner line of people who haven't used one before? It's just another tool. I think there's this whole, again, it's don't put the, put the tool on the pedestal. Like it's used for a certain job. Um, it's not used for everything. I think just uh, there's a big, oh, use a wet palette. Like, it's just another tool for doing certain jobs. And I think that's the way that, in my opinion, it should be looked at. Right. Overrated, underrated. Makeup brushes for painting. Uh, underrated. I think they're very good. Um, obviously, like all cards. Uh, when I was one of the owners of AO, uh, we bought we, we a range of brushes, Series D, but they are underrated. Like I think the makeup brushes are very good as well. I think they're just as good. There's pros and cons to all different types of brushes, but but um, but yeah, I, do, I think they're uh, they're massively underrated. Yeah, I think James pretty much echoes my sentiments. They're very handy. We were even saying like, I've got I've, yeah, I've got a twist on these. Yeah, ones. I I don't use them for dry brushes, but do you know what they're great for? Dusting off models. Yeah, I always have oversized there. makeup yeah, brush. Yeah, yeah, they are good. We know you've got yeah. dusty mos models sat on the shelf or yeah. in your cabinet. Makeup brush, absolute perfect tool for the job. Nice and soft, won't yeah. damage the paint. And I I also just to throw in there, like if you've got a set of Series D or or, yeah, or an equivalent, like the they're, they're too stiff to actually dust models. You end up just snapping things off models. So makeup brushes are great for that. Overrated, underrated. Ultrasonic cleaners, underrated. Oh, I would agree. Uh, they're very good. I wouldn't use them for all the parts from an airbrush. I would just put in the bits that you need to clean, like the end cap, needle cap, needle, things like that. I think there is a, a bit of a concern to be careful because it might take the, the plating off of airbrushes and things like that. So just be careful. Just put in the end cap and bits that do actually need cleaning. And do not use the liquid that comes with the ultrasonic cleaner or ultrasonic liquid. Just use like window cleaner or uh, fairy liquid or something like that. Yeah, I've, I've gone with fairy liquid. But I would uh, just to, yeah, I would make sure you look up like your safety advice and stuff on that before you use them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Vortex paint mixers. Underrated. I'm going to say correctly rated, but we'll... I like them. I think they've got a very good job. I know that I'm going to get probably the uh, drop a bottle a thing from you. Drop a bottle, but, mate. Um, put, a, put an agitator in there. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. I agree. Uh, it's, that's a very good way of doing it. I just do think they're very good. Uh, it's Look, we all like gadgets. All right, okay. It's a cool gadget for you. We guys. all like gadgets. Yeah. That's such an old man thing to yeah, say. I don't care. We, do like, <laughs> we all like your gizmos and stuff. <laughs> gizmos and gadgets. So yeah. So yeah. Uh, no, I like them. They're great. Underrated. Yeah, I just think that they're fine, but I feel like enough people either love them or hate them that they're just sort of set there in the middle, aren't they? Yeah. Foam carry cases. Uh, overrated. <laughs> uh, I, I'm going to agree. I think overrated as well. Why is that? Uh, because it causes friction and rubs paint off a model over time. Rubs paint off a model? Yeah, That's not foam, an argument the, I've heard. The foam, the foam will gradually rub paint off a model. If you, Even if it's varnished, it will do because of the contact between the foam and the model. Just abrasive? Yeah, magnet under the base, metal sheet, carry case, bum. I just think maybe, maybe I've... Maybe I've always used them incorrectly, but I've never had a good time with a foam case, really? if I'm honest. Yeah, just that being said, I don't of... transport models often enough because I don't get no, it. I, never I, really... think, I think it might have something to do with the fact that the only time I was ever trans transporting models was when I was I had a Death Guard army and I was playing games and they're like really spiky and have little fragile yeah, bits all off that. and they yeah, were just yeah. like yeah. being snapped and they're fine. Pin vice. Uh, overrated. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. that this is going to be the more talking point. I'm going to say, uh, I feel like I say correctly rated a lot, but I feel like no one other than James I've ever heard actually. Have Biggest much of a, pin vice hater I've ever met. Yeah, yeah. I think the pin vices are great. Uh, that it, it it does what it needs to and it gives you the control that you need to drill those tiny little barrels. I'm not even going to let you answer. And, uh, pin vice, <laughs> perfect. And yeah, that, so I'm fine. I like them. But James, go ahead. They're overrated, you say? Overrated waste of time. Literally, I will out drill you in a squat bit. <laughs> Literally, I'll out drill you every time. Um, just get yourself a really budget electric drill, sharp knife, middle of the barrel, drill, 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 done. It takes seconds. You're sitting there for ages, just twiddling. The it, risk reward twiddling. of the electric drill is the what? amount. I'm I sorry. don't know if I'm, I'm like, look. You master pressure management with a brush and painting and being careful and that kind of stuff. You just, it's just like another thing. You just got to get the muscle memory in the hand to know how, how careful to use the drill. It's, it takes. Do you know what my little hack for the pin vice is? Buy. I don't think people realize, like, because I, I like I like tools. I like my gadgets. I like my tools. You like your gizmos. Yeah. I don't think people realize what a massive impact buying the, like, expensive, high-quality drill bits has 
in general. So oh, I yeah, buy yeah. like jewelers, like high end. They're quite expensive drill bits, but I mean, at the end of the day, going through plastic, they're going to last you forever as long as you don't lose it or snap it. I use those and they tear through models like butter. Yeah, they do. They're great. And, and like, but still, you're, it's ages to drill with the thing. And, you, and, like, and I'm not being no, I'm sorry, but like, I'm you not know, sat there with like the old mechanical wheel. Right? You're, you're <laughs> going to get, you're going to get RSI or you're going to get long term arthritis from using it over and over and over and over and over again. How many barrels are you drilling today? Okay. You always drill your barrels. <laughs> okay. Uh, like, um, um, but yeah, no, I, like, uh, just a cheap budget drill. Uh, like, you don't have to go Ferrari, Vidal, to assume the wall. Don't, like, don't go too crazy, but like, you'll, you'll drill through the bloody model. But, but like, um, but yeah. Yeah, just just a cheap cheap DIY drill, you'd be fine. And then when you want to put pictures up and stuff, you've got a drill to use as well. So like it's oh, lovely. functional. Yeah, there you yeah, go. It's good. Right. That's a quick fire answer there. Yeah, sorry. I like that. All right. <laughs> that was a that was a fun one. Right. Let's move into our next segment, which is of course question of the week. Please leave in the comments below or uh leave a reply to our story on Instagram if you're doing the audio version. Uh submit your questions for question of the week. We've got a good one this week. What are your tips for gluing parts together that you have painted in sub assemblies, Joe? My uh, key bit of advice to this is glue it before you paint it. Don't paint sub-assemblies. That's, uh, that's my thing. No, I, have no, more, I have uh... no experience with this. No? No. Okay, well, look. Look. As I did explain, because also the clip, <laughs> the clip, <laughs> the clip where I spoke about sub-assemblies that was posted, I think there was a clip. Yeah. Cut out the, uh, conveniently, the explanation where I, did say, yeah, that uh, look, I understand certain things, sub assemblies are needed. God forbid there's a clip of you saying something controversial and then they get out they cut out the bit where you defend the thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so that was the that was the clip. And I feel like a lot of people were like, no, sub assemblies are good. Da, da, da. And I'm like, yeah, I did I did eventually <laughs> say that like a few, you know, there are some exceptions. So when when I w- would use it, I guess the 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 best thing is to just You've got to make sure you scrape off the paint of the connection. Yeah, right? correct, that's yeah. the key thing. Sometimes maybe even pinning it, pinning the connection just to help. I think making sure as well, like when in the building process, just make sure that the joint is good, like dry fit it. Obviously, you're not going to glue yeah, it together. Yeah. Just make sure that you've scraped everything up nice and clean. And you've got a good contact point and then paint it in your sub assemblies and then just go back in, like you said, scrape off the paint, make sure that you've got bare plastic. If, if it's a plastic model, obviously it's a resin model, then bare resin, whatever. Yeah. And then you've got that because you don't want to be gluing paint to paint because that's the no, weakest, exactly that's the weakest joint yeah no exactly um yeah i wouldn't be uh i wouldn't be doing that either i think yeah as long as the things are clean as in the contact points are clean you should be fine but um would yeah. you also maybe recommend i mean, I know you recommend this anyway but even for, for people that don't follow it entirely would you maybe suggest going to super glue for a connection like that rather than yeah i would if I you're would. if you're regularly using that was one of the things that i, I had a big problem with trying sub assemblies at first was that i was using plastic glue hmm. And I feel like um, after doing that and you have these painted parts, I put it together and like there was a bit of overspill. The plastic glue ruins the paint that you've just yeah. done. Like yeah. maybe maybe even if you do use plastic glue. You've um, got to be careful when you're doing it. I mean, obviously, like, after you almost certainly will need to go in and just tidy it up with, mm. with the paint. I, I would I, I'd super glue it. Um, I think the way that plastic glue is designed to melt the plastic, it can sometimes you put a little bit too much or maybe even sometimes not enough and it slips or moves and it ruins the paint job that you've got like yeah bare plastic contact always don't glue pl- paint to plastic or paint to paint or whatever um but yeah i'd super glue the living hell out of it so that's just me but yeah cool well thank you everyone for listening to this week's episode of paint perspective like i said please do leave your comments below if you enjoy the show also follow us on the spotify app podcast if you're listening over there do hit the follow button you'll be notified when we have uh, new episodes coming out every week on Friday. Thank you very much. We'll see you next week. Bye. 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 <laughs> 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 <laughs>